What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Happy Skews Day to you. It is December 13th, 2022. I'm Trey Crowder, and that's Mark Agee. What's up, Mark? What's up, Trey? Uh, we got some good news to talk about today. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But, so, you know, we always love to talk about good news here. It's its own brand for us. <laughs> Absolutely. We're but always we did funny our, and positive yeah. here. We did our Patreon episode on Friday before we get the good news about um, all the different attacks on the power grid infrastructure. I'm um, talking about starting with more North Carolina, and like we don't know who did that yet, but I was making my case that it's right-wing psychos. And after we did that episode, uh, another news story dropped. It turns out there were five separate intrusions and attacks on uh, on uh, power substations in Florida in September yeah. that we just found out about. Right. So, so um, like, yeah, that like like Mark said, our Patreon episode last week was about these like right wing attacks on power substations. It's more than just one in North Carolina, and now he's found some more here. And like, I'm not gonna lie. This shit's starting to freak me out a little bit. <laughs> it seems like seems like they're really up to something out here, Mark. And I'm not I'm not comfortable with it. With with these five, they take us up to at least thirteen. I can count off the top of my head in the past. Uh, no, sixteen, I think. Some of which they've been arrested for. They turn out to be Adam Waffen and Nazis and stuff. And we're under attack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is, a, this is some deep web organizing shit. We're going to talk about that earlier, about how openly this stuff's happening on the internet. But um, yeah, uh, it's wild. Uh, and also want to say, uh, rest in peace, Grant Wall. Um, if you don't know, he's a he's a sports reporter, soccer writer, who was in Qatar covering the World Cup. And uh, he was got kicked out of a game match for uh, wearing a rainbow flag shirt um, because Qatar is horribly, you know, homophobic and uh, abuse of the gay community there and his brother happens to be gay and uh, so that was small act of protest was met with vicious overreaction and also he was very critical of them using slave labor and then he turned up dead now his brother didn't make a noise he suspected it was foul play but i guess the autopsies so so far say it was natural causes but but like what they don't not like no specifics still yet like what the it's like no nah, causes were not as far as that's fishy seen. Hell of a coincidence that a yeah. big critic of your autocratic regime drops dead while he's in your country, but no evidence of anything. So I'll try not to go off the conspiracy deep end. I will just say that if you want to make <laughs> states know how to make people dead with, without it looking bad. So whatever. Um, for the good news, uh, there's a break in cold fusion this week, Trey. Um, it's not nearly close to being commercial, probably decades away from it, you know, being able to solve all of our energy problems. But um, while... <laughs> Our mass media is organized around making us think that billionaires are going to lead us into the future. Some workaday scientists just fucking trying to uh, save humanity from themselves. And I, we keep inventing our way out of problems and thinking there was never a problem. Right. <laughs> eventually, yeah. eventually, we're going to fucking run up against it. But uh, hopefully this will solve the near term problem, because at least in my lifetime, we'll uh, you know not have to flee north. Um, yeah, right. But, uh, that's like, that's what I've always just sort of <laughs> had to tell myself about, you know, the apocalyptic, uh, trends and whatnot and climate change. Uh, and I'm like, well, somebody, some smart person is going to figure that out, you know, somewhere they'll figure something out. But so you're saying like cold fusion, it's not commercially viable or whatever, but you're saying they've like cracked it. Cause that's yeah, like the a first, big fucking deal, right? <laughs> yeah. For the first time they're able to do a, do a cold fusion reaction. Um, this is under the web, this is under the framework of weapons research, which is pretty much the only Always. way the government does. Yeah. yeah. It's but, the only way. But, but they were able to uh, generate more energy from a cold fusion reaction than it took to make it for the first time. That's um, incredible. So that, that's a pretty incredible breakthrough. But like the I don't understand the I'm science dumb, but Me like too. They're only able to fire the laser once every X amount of times, and never mm-hmm. generate enough energy to power something. It's good, but it'll fire multiple times per like second. So, right, yeah, lasers, man. I don't know. Lasers. Um, what are you gonna do? There's also a breakthrough in cancer vaccine. It looks like uh, we might have might have an MR, mRNA skin cancer vaccine soon. So science is still out there doing it, while the rest of our culture is uh, diving head, head first back into the dark ages. So yeah, hopefully I we hope. can balance those things out a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I hope people don't start, you know, setting their labs on fire and shit like that. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, as long as they keep letting science do science, maybe they'll yeah you know, continue to come up with some good shit. But a lot of people not into that. They don't like science doing science at all. Nah, DeSantis announced today he's starting like an anti-CDC to investigate all the crimes committed under mRNA research. So like, all these psychos can still be resistant to getting so, mRNA vaccines while the rest right. of us are turn, turning immortal and fighting up cancers or whatever. Um, other, this is a funny thing. We couldn't, I wanted to show the video, but Trey rightfully flagged it, that it would get, um, us dinged for copyright infringement because there's a Lady Gaga song on it. But so Biden signed 
the uh, 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 Respect for Marriage Act today, which does some good stuff with gay marriage, not good enough, but whatever helps, uh, and interracial marriage. And um, uh, they had the signing ceremony, and after he finishes signing it, somebody had the bright idea to play Lady Gaga's Born This Way. Mm-hmm. And Biden's face, while they go, he doesn't, <laughs> they're playing Lady Gaga, he's just sort of like, what? Yeah. It's yeah. a very Papaw face that he makes when yeah. he comes on. <laughs> yeah. Mayor Pete was there, so it was a cool moment for him. And Kristen Sinema he was there, who was, uh, happens to be bisexual, so she was at the, si- uh, uh, the signing. And uh, right when the late part of the Gaga song hits where she goes, don't, um, don't be a drag, be a queen, don't be a drag, be a queen, is when Biden's talking to her. So I thought that was fucking perfect. <laughs> anyway, all that made me very happy. Uh, Sam Smith sang, so did uh, um, Cindy Lauper. It was a bit, they, they gayed up the White House, Trady made it gay as hell. It was awesome. Gaying it up. <laughs> I love it when things get gayed up. Also, I love yeah. it when uh, Mark's got good news and is happy and smiling. It's uh, it, must, it really is Christmas time. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's get into it. With us, as always, is producer Matt. This is Weekly Skews. I want to remind y'all a couple quick things. As always, number one, if you'd like to see me perform live, go to TreyCrowder.com and check out the dates. Me, Corey, and Drew will be in Nashville at Zany's, perhaps our favorite club in the country, this weekend doing our pre-Christmas shows. And then in 2023, I'm going all over the place and still adding more dates all the time. So go to TreyCrowder.com, check it out, come and see me. Number two, if you enjoy this program and would like to show your support, you can do so by signing up on Patreon. You go to weeklyskews.com slash more, or just go on Patreon and look me up. Either way works. $5 a month on there gets you access to full-length bonus episodes, like the one we referenced earlier from last week where we talked about the right-wing lunatics cutting all the lights out. We got plenty more in store. We're having fun with it. We hope you will consider signing up uh, and do that. Get some more skews in your life. Okay. As for the show tonight, new treason text just dropped, y'all. In case you missed it, there's a whole batch of new messages from Trump Chief of Staff Mark Meadows' phone. And y'all ain't going to believe this, but they almost seem to indicate that the Republicans in Congress were actively trying to steal the 2020 election for Donald Trump. Crazy, I know. We'll get into the details a little later, but first, of course, we begin with the Daily Dumbass. Matt, graphic, please. Tonight's DD, me, for going out of my way and driving all the way down to the butt plug store when I could have just been hitting up CVS this whole time. That's right. It's who else? Marjorie Taylor Green, everybody. By the way, you can pick up a butt plug or a dildo at Target and CVS nowadays. I don't even know how we got here. <laughs> Sorry. I think we still be... So... In case you missed it, right there, right right before Matt just paused it, she says, I don't even know how we got here, and I'm pretty certain you can hear a dude in the crowd go, gay yeah. marriage. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's simple. You let the gays get married, and there's butt plugs at Target. Who knows what's next? But, like, unironically, though, they think and I, say. <laughs> dude, I went through these seven stage, the five stages of grief except for amusement here because I learned a lot of different stuff. Yeah. <laughs> One, at first I was like, she's making this up, right? What is this, what is this fucking dumb lady carrying on about? And then it turns out that's not true. Um, uh, it turns out uh, Vice looked and checked it out, Vice News, and uh, they've all been carrying um, uh, – like sex toys all in their lube and condom section since like 2011, 2012 at CVS, Walgreens, Kroger, Safeway, Target, Walmart. And I, so then my second thought was, well, the reason I didn't know that is because I didn't go shopping for butt plugs. Right? Right. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't, I didn't know butt plugs or CVS because I wasn't looking at butt plugs and my wife and I don't use condoms. So like, I had no idea this was happening. And I was like, well, how did she find out it was happening? Right. right. That's the third layer of this is like, was she shopping for butt plugs at Target and saw it was there? And so then it turns out she must have found out because Tucker Carlson did a segment on this the night before because he just learned about it, which made me think, is Tucker fucking looking at butt, for butt plugs to see Right. Has? I mean, you are right. It does sort of beg the question. Like if they've been offered in these uh, chains for 10 plus years already, which it's been proven that they have, then like, why are they just talking about it now? It's also, it's funny to me before we watch the Tucker thing, it's funny to me to think that it's like, like real butt plug enthusiasts, I'm sure don't traffic in the target type butt plugs. You know what I mean? No. Like these are these are like these have got to be like vanilla entry level, you know, starter. <laughs> 
these are starter butt plugs if you're getting them from Target. I feel like, like yeah. real pros are still going to, you know, butt plugs R Us or whatever or somewhere on the internet and getting yeah. that uh, getting that high dollar top shelf um, item. But yeah. it's nice that just regular day to day people can get their butt plugs when they go, yeah. you know, pick up their cold medicine and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're really into it, you got to get the one with the two cycle engine and the alternator and shit. So yeah, yeah so, right. but yeah, but if you just want to dip your butthole in the waters of butt play, yeah, you get the one from Target. But I went, I went and found the Tucker clip because I, I wanted to uh, when I watched it, and you got to see this. This is a fucking commercial for butt plugs. Like uh -huh. you got to watch this. <laughs> this, this. <laughs> The producer for a producer for Tucker Carlson tonight happened to notice that CVS is now selling toys. Happened to notice. Appear to be a relative bargain. For example, there's a tush cush for $11.97, though the accompanying lotion that goes with it will set you back an additional $11.97. And if you've got the cash right there in the middle, the buzzy butt will run you $32.50. <laughs> Information just wanted you to know. About New York, but it's Tucker. it's immoral to sell Marlboros, Trace. Just so you know, <laughs> thank you for your. You're right. It is hilarious. It's like you know, God damn, that's a deal. Like it literally sounds like he's pitching these things. <laughs> you know, like the yeah. conceit of it is sort of like, yeah, they're not that expensive either. It's not that bad. You tush, cush, <laughs> buzzy butt. What more do you want? Today, there's a guy in the uh, like uh, 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 accounts payable or receivable office at like corporate CVS, noticing like a 43 percent uptick uh, uptick in <laughs> butt. <laughs> Twitch buzz or whatever and the buzzy butt yeah <laughs> and the buzzy, buzzy butt. butt's moving like crazy like well it is christmas time you know like <laughs> christmas right around the corner it's not that weird we see an uptick in buzzy butt sales i guess <laughs> his little marble thing is like indicative of like yeah. something though because i i don't really have a huge stance with the drugstore should sell cigarettes or not i get how it's sort of a, it goes against their brand as a health place but like yeah if you're going to pick one to sell more or less immoral the what is it the, what's the name of it again trey the buzzy butt buzzy butt buzzy butt i'm i've never heard of a buzzy butt killing anyone right <laughs> marbles kill millions of people so like what i don't know yeah well it's like <laughs> if the reverse was true like in mo you know what i mean it's like oh so you can sell marbles but you can't sell a buzzy butt you know what i mean like i don't feel yeah. like yeah, it's like, no, you you know, America, freedom, sell them all, right? That's what Tucker's yeah. saying. He shouldn't be against the buzzy butt. He should yeah. be for but, it and cigarettes all in the same place. But it's also crazy to me that, like, these people are ostensibly anti-pleasure sex in all forms, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be gay sex or non not uh, sex outside of marriage, non-procreative sex, or even blowjobs, a lot of them, um, you know, and, and premarital sex, uh, buzzy butts. <laughs> The, these people, all they fucking think about is sex. Well, dude, I think they're all so fucking repressed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, clearly, like, yeah, they definitely think about sex more uh, on average than we do. I would guarantee it because it's so, like, fucking, you know, weird and demonized in their heads that makes it, like, wrong. And people think about yeah. shit that's wrong, especially when the stuff that's wrong involves your butthole and whatnot, you know? Yeah. It's going to, yeah, it's going to get to you. We just had like a two week news cycle where you know, they had the Twitter files thing where it's like they're talking about Hunter Biden's dick and sex tapes and stuff. And then everyone else is like, LOL, bro, why are you so worried about Hunter's dick? And they go, oh, it's not about the dick, it's about principle. We're not obsessed with sex. And then I just saw this clip of Jesse Waters on Fox. And look how fucking horny these perverts are. It's all they think about. Hunter went right up to McCarthy's mom and introduced himself, tried laying down some of that famous Biden charm. I've seen Hunter's videos. I wouldn't want him anywhere near my mom. But <laughs> Hunter's telling Hunter Biden, please don't fuck our moms. We saw your videos. <laughs> you know, sorry, videos. We know how much you get down. We've seen that. <laughs> we've seen that dick and what you do with it. No, sir. Not around me. Never. <laughs> me, maybe we could party, but not my mom. That's too much. Yeah, it's it, it's the I don't know, man. It's like I've seen, I've watched Hunter fuck a lot, and I don't want him near my. Why are you watching that shit, man? What the fuck you get? Anyway, apparently uh, Hunter's really well hung. I haven't looked at the pictures, but uh, I guess that's what got them. Guess gets them so riled up. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, our first honorable mention for Daily Dumbass is uh, once again everything else for being the same as slavery and stuff like that. Parentheses, uh, which isn't was wasn't that bad. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. Here we go. You'll understand in just a second. You know the plantation owner who said, "I need cotton, and you're going to pick it," is morally equivalent 
the person today who says, I don't want to get sick, so you have to take the jab. Mm -hmm. I am placing, it is, it is, and I want to be clear that I mean exactly what I just said. Okay? <laughs> it's not a gaff. I mean it. You are equivalent to a plantation owner who enslaved black people and forced them to work for you. Okay. If you today, uh, as a medical professional, it, my favorite part is definitely that middle part where he like, you know, yeah. it's like, I want to make it very clear. This is not a gaff. I mean this completely. It's like he knows how absurd it is, but it's still doubling down on it. You know, it also makes me wonder if like they had some kind of meeting where it was like, okay, let's maybe cool off on the Holocaust comparisons for a minute, you know, with the vaccine <laughs> mandates. Like we did, we, there's, it's getting kind of weird out here with all that stuff lately. So I think we should pivot maybe to what do you got? And somebody's like slavery, like that's perfect. That's always a good plan B for these comparisons. I don't know in what universe, you know, thinking people should get vaccinated during a pandemic is the same as being a plantation owner. Uh, but yeah, here we are. This is a, uh, this is a guy in Minnesota, a Minnesota Republican. Um, yeah. His name, state his representative, state, state representative yeah. in Minnesota, Walter Hudson. Yeah. He was just elected by like 25% <laughs> in some fucking psychotic district. So he remember he said, I'm not a, uh, this is not a gap. I mean what I'm saying. He went on a local radio station to, to talk about this and he leaned into it even further and he compared it to, uh, he made another analogy where he said, if my wife's boss demands a sexual favor as a condition for her continued employment, we all recognize that's deeply immoral and ought to be illegal. There's a principle here. And I've got to ask, what's the fucking principle? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I, I, keep, I keep going back to this. These guys insist on like labor laws. We can fire anyone for any reason. Right. Except, you know, they, like, they would like to carve out for being racist. And then they want to carve out for, I should be able to give you COVID. <laughs> right? I, yeah. Like, I think like in their minds, and again, I, you know, I was trying to make sense of this shit is a uh, fool's errand, but like, I think in their minds, it's like uh, both slave owners and his wife's hypothetical boss demanding sexual favors are like forcing you to do a thing with your body that you don't want to do, which is what uh -huh. getting the vaccine is to them, I think is how it works in their brain. But of course it's like, it's hilariously evident that those are false equivalences to say the very least. I mean, slavery. Yeah. I don't feel like that's, uh, that's approaching the same thing. It feels like, feels no. like a little bit more extreme to me owning slaves, but you know, what do I know? Yeah, because also if you don't want to get the vaccine to keep your job, you have the option to quit and literally not work, which is not a choice in slavery. <laughs> so uh, it's like, but it's like if, if you're in a philosophy class, you might think you're smart making the point where slaves are forced to do stuff and I'm being forced to do stuff. But like mm -hmm. we're all forced to do stuff all the time. It'd be like, what do you mean I can't wear uh, sh uh, no shirt, no shoes in this store? That's slavery. It's like it's the or same like thing. drive after drinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I want to get drunk and drive. This is America. And people say, no, you can't because it might impact other people. I just don't see how it's any different. But, you know, they're all limited. Also, like, dude, most Republicans would be totally down with slavery if they somehow got it on the dot. Like, if Bezos yeah. was like, I found a way to have slaves, you know, uh, they would uh, they'd definitely back him up on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, these guys, uh, this guy loves his uh, fucking specious analogies. Here's one from last year. Uh, he tweeted this out. Trying to help sick friends five, find unsanctioned early treatments feels categorically similar to hiding Jews in my attic. There it is. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Everything I'm saying he was just switching it up a little bit with the slavery thing. He'd already he'd already been on the Holocaust uh, comparison tip for a minute now, so he just had to he just needed to freshen it up some. So he went with slavery and then rape. So yeah, that's yeah. that's his three. That's his three comparison for COVID mandates. Holocaust, slavery, right. Uh, the the idea that like we had a, like we always have a, we have a really narrow definition of freedom in America. Freedom is always uh, defined as a freedom to and not a freedom from, right? Right. You have a freedom to carry a gun into a grocery store. You don't have a freedom from hunger, for example, mm -hmm. right? So that, that's one example. But also like I have a freedom to not get the vaccine and still keep my job. You don't have have a freedom from a COVID unsafe workplace, right? Because right. it's not just his right. boss, his coworkers involved in this decision too. There's like no obligation to other people. That's what they want the freedom to. They want the freedom to not have to care about anyone fucking. Absolutely, else that's like yeah. the central like motivating factor. I feel like with all of their shit is what you just said. Like, 
-hmm. just the complete inability to care about anybody else, you know, <laughs> like it's just, it's all about what directs them or if affects them personally. And mm -hmm. it's behind so many of uh, their bullshit stances. Yeah. I feel like is that core tenant right there. I saw a, re uh, a reporter from his area saying this guy is trying very, this isn't the, the, going back to, it's not a gaff thing. He's trying very hard to be Minnesota's uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, and along that tip, he's like, he's want to keep you around. He's going to, he's a rising star. Uh, he's called because Minnesota still has, has legal abortion, but surrounding uh, states, like for example, uh, Wisconsin struggling to figure out if like a law from like the 1800s or whatever still counts. So like, like they, they, there's like, so people are fleeing from Wisconsin to Minnesota to get medical care. Um, he's called for murder charges. For people that come from out of state to get abortions, or anyone that helps, them, including companies that pay for their, because some some uh, uh, corporations agreed to reimburse them to, uh, employees for expenses when they travel, and he's calling for like anyone involved in it. So I guess if a person gets on a flight, the pilot, Spirit Airlines pilot could be hauled up on murder charges for flying a pregnant woman across state lines. Right. Um, anyway, it, it, along that lines, he's this, he he <laughs> tweeted this out because Dick Sporting Goods. Uh, pledged up to four thousand dollars travel expenses for employees. Uh, he tweeted out, "Dick Sporting Goods desperately wants to kill children," which is just a deeply funny sentence to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's also like you know that they that <laughs> them flipping out about all those companies offering reimbursement for employees to get abortions or whatever is. It's like that's a very like corporate capitalistic policy. I feel like because it's like you know, pregnant employees, it's going to cost them more money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like if their employees are getting pregnant and you got maternity leave and all that shit that they would rather mm -hmm. not deal with. And it like makes business sense for them to just pay for it. And, you know, it's like the type of free market, you know, thinking that you would assume that they'd be all on board with, but you yeah, know, it has to do with abortion. So it's the exact opposite. <laughs> Yeah, but I guess it solves that problem. We, we've been got sued ten times last year for firing women for getting pregnant. I have the solution for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's probably as I mean, companies only do stuff for the money, but also it's just like it's a, it's these are called benefits for a reason, and you offer them to people to make it your job more appealing, so people will want to work for you, right? If nobody employs sure. want this benefit, it would, nobody they they wouldn't offer it. So yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, dude, like I'm I'm glad they do it. Obviously, I'm just saying yeah. that like I don't feel like any kind of move like this is ever ultimately motivated by much of anything other than you know the bottom know, line or whatever do you know why we have employee provided health insurance no. uh, <laughs> it's like my understanding and I apologize we get the rough edge of this wrong here but like during world war ii there's in effect the salary cap because the government was like you know everything was getting rationed and they were taxing shit of the people to pay for the war effort so to get around that companies offered health benefits as a way to uh, attract employees, uh, highly desirable employees, because they, they, they put a loophole in the tax code that had a national salary cap. And this is a work right around it. So we, because of a loophole, we have a shitty healthcare system. And this is just another way of working around the system to try to offer your employees benefits in a time where, uh, you know, it's an intense labor market competition. Everybody's seeing the employment rate super low and people are going on strike and demanding raises. So yeah, the Dix is just trying to stay afloat with their little sporting goods operation. This guy's calling them murders. <laughs> yep. Well, you know, you'll have that uh, with mm -hmm. these people. All right, let's get into it. Uh, as I said, new messages from Mark Meadows related to January 6th and the events leading up to it. And there's a whole bevy of Republican Congress people further implicated in these new releases, many of which we knew already. Um, mm -hmm. But there's a whole, um, whole big bunch of new messages that shed more light on just how much of a sorry-ass operation this was. So, so this text got leaked to Talking Points Memo, like that's the the logo you see on the screen, TPM, which is like a liberal blog. And I don't know why they chose this is from the J Six Committee, and I'm not sure why they chose TPM. Um, but I did before we get into the actual story. I had a really fun half an hour this afternoon where I was trying to figure out because Talking Points Memo was run by a guy named Josh Marshall, and I was like, wait, Josh Marshall is some weird internet porn thing. And I was like, wait, I remember two Washington Reporter porn things. Is it the tentacle porn guy? And I was like, no, it's not the tentacle porn guy. Josh Marshall was watching porn, actually tweeting out a porn up link. 
And it was actually pretty cool because when a, a reporter from like a, a called him, everybody's making fun of him. All, like he had one of those, he was the main character of Twitter for like six hours. Everybody making fun of him. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> another reporter called him and asked him about it. He's like, you know what? I watch porn. Everybody watches porn. I'm going to choose right. to be ashamed of this and it'll go away in like 10 seconds. He didn't, he didn't say it was half. Well, yeah, well because yeah. you, you, so this dude, this dude's liberal, presumably. He runs like yeah. a liberal blog or whatever. Yeah. So he's yeah. a liberal. Yeah, right. Well, that's like, you know, that's how you ought to respond to that if you're not like a, you know, sexually repressed, uh, hypocritical lunatic uh, where sex is concerned. Like, that's the only way. To, so I, I mean, it is, that is a bit of a nightmare. I feel like for most people, yeah. accidentally mm -hmm. tweeting out a porn link and then becoming a trending topic and everybody roasting you for, you know, uh, jerking it mobily or whatever. But, um, but yeah, as far yeah. as how you handle it, I mean, that's the only play right there. That's, and it went away almost immediately, which is a lesson here. Everyone else should take because it was it wasn't even anything. It wasn't anything to be embarrassed about. It was just like two nice ladies having a good time. But mm. so, uh, <laughs> but then I was like, I could, those rack of my brain trying to remember who the tentacle porn guy was. And then I see another reporter talking about this exact same story named Kurt Eichenwald. And I was like, Kurt Eichenwald, he's the guy that tweeted out a screen grab of his computer with a the, the, the link that said tentacle porn in it. All right, so my my afternoon came full circle. Anyway. <laughs> To the story. <laughs> yeah. It's nice when things uh, work out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'll put it out in the universe and answer my question. So, uh, so these texts came out, some of them, which we already knew, but like, I think the deep, que the, the true question of our age is, do these people actually believe this shit or are they just I know. pretending? That's what, right. that was the main thing that I wanted to, you know, talk about with you is that very question. Cause you read through these uh, text messages and it's like, yeah, it certainly seems like many of them at least genuinely yeah. believe all this crazy shit you know yeah so there's a little bit of actual news here which we'll get to but yeah i did with the, the premise for a patron episode on friday was talking about like basically how we're surrounded by tons of right-wing psychos who are all talking to each other on the dark web and uh, we don't see them all the time until they shoot at our power stations but they're also in our government right? yeah so so <laughs> some of these have already been released but not all of them but they just dump them in a batch to talk about memo but so so far, they looked through like uh, 364 text messages um, from members of Congress um, and 95 responses from Meadows, which they're get, they're just funny because they're, they're he's being annoyed by these crazy congressmen semi ghosting them, even though Meadows seems to believe some of it. Um, Fox News personalities are in there, a bunch of media figures, um, uh, but the full scope of it, you know, hadn't been known. One of them, this guy made me laugh, um, Ralph Norman, who. <laughs> He's like a 70 year old guy who's fairly new to Congress. He took over for, um, who did he take over for? I'll take a second. Sorry. Um, uh, one of those congressmen that got promoted to Trump's uh, uh, administration. Um, he's in the South Carolina's fifth district. Uh, he took over for Mick Mulvaney. That's who he took over for. But so he, he tweeted, texted Mark Meadows, uh, telling him to uh, invoke martial law. Mm -hmm. uh, called Marshall wrong. And yep. They always spell it wrong. And I'm like, we are really, really going to be ruled by people who didn't understand. Like, what, is, what do you think martial law is like? Spelled right. Like putting Ray, Marshall Raylan Gibbons in charge or like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But giving it to the U.S. Marshals, handing yeah. control over to them. <laughs> yeah. 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 U.S. Marshals, they've got better law. So they've got like the best law. So we need to institute their type of law, which is, of course, referred to. Yeah. As martial law, it's not a bad oh. name for like a procedural. You know what I no, mean? No, yeah. So that main character's last name is Marsh, like you said. Yeah, and then yeah, mm -hmm. martial law. We should pitch that to CBS. Make a note of it. Well, anyway, go ahead. Without looking it up, I'm going to bet there's a CBS or ABC procedural in the '70s called martial law. I will bet. Yeah, like probably, you're probably right. <laughs> um, so whenever I find out one of these psychos, the first place I go is Wikipedia, which isn't like a perfect research point, but it's a good place to get the broad strokes of what someone's about. And literally the first thing under his tenure section of his Wikipedia is sexual assault joke. Um, so yeah, we're off to a good start. What happened was during, when, during Brett Kavanaugh's nomination fight, um, he, uh, he was at an election debate for the Republican nomination, a primary debate. And he started the debate by asking the audience, did y'all hear about this late breaking news in the Kavanaugh hearings? Ruth Bader Ginsburg came out saying she was groped by Abraham Lincoln. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's, that, that, that happened before he said that and then got the nomination, then got elected. Um, I love that the, the perfect, like, uh, like, uh, eighties comic format of that. You know what I mean? It's like, you guys hear about this? You guys hearing this? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah. and then bam. Yeah. 
with the Lincoln reference and everything. I was, I got to admit, I was a little surprised and uh, I guess very mildly impressed at the fact that, I, unless I missed it, this Wikipedia does not have a Hitler section. No, right? not Hitler comments section. about Hitler section, which I was surprised because it's that turns up a lot you know, uh, yeah. a praising Hitler section of the Wikipedia. And he at least has avoided that. He did have a, a, a meeting with Moms Demand Action was a gun control group and took out his gun and, and from his desk and put it on the table. So, yeah. <laughs> he was trying to make a point that guns aren't the problem. Here, I have a gun and I'm not killing you. But you could see how that would be. <laughs> yeah, dude. Threat. That's crazy. <laughs> All right. Because I'm assuming so, that many of those in that in a group like that, especially at the high level, like the the you know the the people that are going and meeting with elected officials and stuff, and a, a you know a mothers for gun control type group, like they've probably been affected by the shit, or you know in some way, and uh, then for this dude to pull a gun out and put it on the table while meeting with them is wild. He also he also backed Steve King, right? Which and Steve King was like. Uh, Big racist. white supremacist, yeah. big racist. So you know he's yeah, he's he's in there. He just hasn't got yeah. to Hitler yet. I assume it'll come up at some point. Yeah, Steve Steve King famously kept a Confederate flag in his office, even though he's a congressman from uh, Iowa. Iowa, Iowa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't. It does, it's not good to have you from anywhere, but it's pretty explicable. <laughs> There's only one Absolutely, reason fucking Iowa. Yeah. Uh, so a guy that crazy was texting the White House Chief of Staff. Uh. Uh, or, or getting or sending urgent texts to invoke martial law spelled incorrectly and apparently got a warm reception from the president's chief of staff. That's the takeaway here. Another big player in here is uh, the Freedom Caucus chair, Scott Perry, who appears to be fully off the fucking deep end. He was yeah. fully in on like the uh, uh, Italian spy satellites overthrowing the uh, election. He thought the CIA had teamed up with United Kingdom to throw the election. Um, he... <laughs> He was he was urging to seize all the voting machines in Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Arizona. Um, he was texting like thirty times an hour. <laughs> right, he's fully fucking insane. Yeah, he tried. He tried to. Um, he, this is very weird because he thought CIA Director Gina Haspel was one of the people secretly behind rigging the election, but also the people he wanted to put in charge and overseeing the recount was a group called National Endowment for Democracy, which is a grant-making operation for foreign NGOs. And the board on the board sits uh, Elise Stefanik, who's a Republican Congress from New York, and Elliot Abrams, who was the psycho who uh, was involved in Iran Contra and the School for Americas and all the coup shit in South America in the eighties and didn't get, he, he was sentenced for Iran Contra, but then pardoned. Anyway, Trump put him back in the administration when he got elected, because of course he did. What I'm saying is like, he thinks the CIA overthrew the election, but this organization is clearly reads to me like a CIA front. They're handing out money to uh, you know right. overseas groups who want to fight socialism. It's, anyway, th this guy doesn't know anything about how the world works or how the government works, and he's in the government. It's probably the fifth most powerful Republican in Congress right now. And right. This dude saying? is like this is a perfect example of the of what we mentioned earlier. To me, it's like reading through these in the article and stuff from this guy in particular. It was like in my head, I was like, this guy seems like. Like he really believes all this crazy shit. Cause like, yeah. honestly with these, with actual Congress people and stuff like that, who were wrapped up in January 6th, I figured that most of them, you know, knew that it was some bullshit, but were just trying to play the card anyway. Cause they thought they could get away with it. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they wanted Trump to remain president and they were going to come hell or high water. They were going to figure out a way to justify that. And the truth was immaterial to them. Right. And I think a lot of them are that way. But I'm saying and reading through this and with this guy in particular, I started thinking, I was like, dude, some of these people like 100 percent actually believe this shit in their head. And that's like way scarier, honestly, because yeah. well, I don't know which one's worse. They're both pretty damn bad. But having, like you said, a high level, you know, relatively powerful Republican congressman who is fully roped into like hardcore, deep web conspiracy theories and shit and uh, trying to use those to justify a literal coup is uh that's some wild wild shit right there yeah so do you remember the re release the kraken lady sydney powell yeah of course uh the one who was like 
on the lam ducking subpoenas from Dominion voting systems because they sued her, tried to sue her for $1.4 billion or whatever. Mm -hmm. They finally caught her and had to like trap her in her, <laughs> her driveway and shove the subpoena through the fucking her car window. <laughs> so uh, he apparently is the one who suggested Trump hook up with Sidney Powell. So the one thing he did get accomplished from this is ruining Sidney Powell's fucking life. So to that, I say thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, another big player here is Andy Biggs, who yeah. appears to be somewhere between like true believer and just cynical power grabber. Mm -hmm. um, he was trying to overthrow the election in Arizona, and he say, had some crazy shit in there like thinking that a bunch of illegal immigrants uh, undocumented immigrants voted and somehow complaining about native americans voting which i don't really understand yeah it's like are they are they not supposed to be able to and this guy said he's like he did like they vote in their own they they got their own elections we we let them have that that's how it works they're not supposed to be voting in ours he did <laughs> they're not real americans <laughs> the native americans <laughs> yeah the ones here first don't care but he's like he didn't have any sort of spin on it. He just sort of pointed out the Native Americans voted, and I guess right. Mark Meadows is supposed to understand his implication. I don't. I don't. I, I couldn't even. I couldn't even read any racism to it. It's just like, hey, Native Americans voted. Okay. Um, he. Uh, he. The craziest part of this was the independent state legislature theory. He was. He was a big proponent of that, which we talked about a couple weeks ago. There's a Supreme Court case they're arguing about right now about the constitution gives the power of state legislatures to set the parameters for an election. But they're saying they have all the power, meaning even if they set up their state constitution to require voting, they can just decide not to count the votes and fucking do whatever they want because the constitution is the state legislatures, which means that state legislatures wouldn't have to follow the own constitutions that the state legislatures devise and set up, which doesn't make any <laughs> sure. fucking sense. Right. Right. So, but anyway, so he, that at least has a legal framework. That's the thing is like when you talk about the election being rigged and all these different types of psychos are saying different types of stuff. Like you got the QAnon people who think it was Italian satellites and the CIA, right? You got the Federalist Society types who think about the talk about the independent state legislature theory and how like the founders didn't foresee mail voting and all this shit. And then you got like you like part of what Elon is doing with the Twitter files. Is when people like Trump say the election was rigged, he includes big tech censorship in that. So part of what Elon's laying out is that January 6th was justified because some right wing counts were diminished on Twitter because that was part of the rigging. Right. So it's like there's there's so many flavors of psycho in this movement. Right. <laughs> that it's, it's hard to keep them all straight to see which part of they believe or whether they believe all of it, even though some parts are mutually exclusive. Um Another well, yeah, because it's wild to me to think like where if you're one of these people, wherever they're at on the loony spectrum. And some of them, there is no line, but it's just weird. Like, I wonder where the line is for some of them. Do you know what I mean? Like, they used to say, they believe all this other shit, but they're like Italian spy satellites. That's clearly made up, you know, or yeah. whatever. But the but Dominion voting machines, hey, something's fucky there. Uh, it just feels like you'd either be down the rabbit hole completely or, you know, have a brain that works to me. Yeah. <laughs> but you're right, though. They are, they clearly are, they do exist on that uh, yeah. spectrum. Yeah. So uh, this this was already public, but the 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 Kevin McCarthy's response to it was public, but not the what he was responding to. But when uh, uh, this guy Andy Biggs is pitching him on the idea of using the independent state legislature theory, so the legislatures and the governors can just throw the election to Trump and ignore the fucking voters, uh, Meadows responded, "I love it." Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Can you imagine going to prison because you respond, I love it, to a fucking illegal plan? That, that yeah, a lot of the, it definitely, and, you know, Mark Meadows was obviously like, <laughs> he was pretty busy when all this was yeah. going on. But a lot of these, mm -hmm. it felt like he was just sort of placating them or something. Because, yeah, he's just like, okay, yeah, sounds good. All right, like it. You know, and I feel like he's on the other end, like, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. I get one more text message from Scott Perry today. Uh, I'm not trying to make up excuses for him. It just doesn't no, sound it, like he's, it, yeah. It, it probably was like that because there are other text messages from people who aren't in on this conspiracy theory where he seems like go along, get along with them too, right? Yeah. He's just Meadows is clearly just trying to get to January twentieth at noon. So he can fucking right. just leave and wash his hands of this right. and, and, and Trump's good enough, good enough graces with Trump so he can make a bunch of money off of him, which he has. He runs like some some of his packs that Trump runs his money through. So, but in Georgia. So apparently Meadows was texting with a guy named Jordan Fuchs, who's Brad Raffensperger. He's the Georgia Secretary of State who would not go right. along with any of this stuff. Right. Trump's infamous phone call with Georgia that is being investigated. Apparently Meadows was live texting the phone call with Jordan Fuchs. And <laughs> here's their takeaway. 
<laughs> Here's what they're texting in the middle of this phone call. Uh, we should, Jordan Fuchs, we should end this call. I don't think this will be productive much longer. Meadows, okay. Let's save the relationship. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> here's this Jordan Fuchs guy being like, hey, this call is being recorded. Can you please stop doing this so we can all not, not be implicated in any sort of criminal trial? And Meadows is like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then the guy says, wow, when the phone call's over. So they all knew it was bad at the fucking time. Well, dude, um, you know Mark Meadows couldn't do shit to get Trump off that phone at that particular moment. You know what I mean? Like texting, <laughs> being like, hey, you know, rain, rain him in. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like, you can't do that shit. There ain't no way. No, Don Jr. was all uh, all up in uh, Mark Meadows' text about Georgia, too. And he was all also fully bought into this independent state legislation theory. Um, but so, which brings us to Marjorie Taylor Greene, all right? Because this doesn't have anything to do with the text messages, but I just want to talk about a few a few ways in which January 6th is ongoing, okay? Um this is Mar- Mar- that same speech or Marge, uh, large brain Marge talked about butt plugs. We talked about at the beginning of the show. That was at a dinner hosted by the New York Young Republican Club, where she was uh, being awarded um, the Richard M. Nixon Prize for public service. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I can't argue with that. Really, like that, uh, you know, that seems fair. Like that's she's a valid recipient of that particular award from where I'm sitting. Dude, I didn't really know a ton about Watergate until like a couple of years ago when I was doing a podcast about it and got it. It's, it's much crazier than how it's filtered down to the public rec- imagination. Like, really, oh, it's like a little cut rate burglary, right? That, that Nixon covered up. The guys, the White House plumbers dudes had a whole list of plans, one of which was fire bombing the, fire bombing the Brookings Institution because they were a moderate center left anti Vietnam War think tank and also kidnapping. Uh, American anti-war protesters are shipping them to Vietnam to be tortured. <laughs> like, okay. I, none of them, none of them flipped except for one guy who told the least John Dean who told the minimum amount. So I, we'll never know what the fuck else they got up to. And they only got caught because they had to break in a second time because they fucked up planning the first wiretap. Anyway, they're giving out the Richard M. Nixon public service award yeah. <laughs> for, for psychos who try to overthrow the government and start right. themselves as dictators. Right. Large brain Marge at a dinner where she chooses to say this. Hit the video, Matt. And I want to tell you something. If Steve Bannon and I had organized that, we would have won. (laughs) Not to mention, it would have been armed. Yeah. Yeah. If if I had actually been behind January 6th, we would have killed way more people. (laughs) (laughs) It's such a crazy thing to just say in public. I mean, that's what she does. That's her whole thing. That's how she's getting the Richard M. Nixon award. Uh, but yeah, yeah it's wild. Cause it's like fully endorsing January 6th, like mm-hmm. completely. But the only problem with it is that it didn't work. And yeah. then it's like narcissistic on top of that. It's like, had I been involved, it definitely would have worked, which like no fucking way. Her, her inclusion into the planning of anything does not improve upon the end result of that thing. Uh, yeah, she'd have been so- shot like that QAnon psycho. Uh, like she sounds like Mark Wahlberg talking about nine eleven. Like yeah, if I had right. it wouldn't have gone down. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this, I wanted to point out the context in which all this is happening because Brett Kavanaugh just fucking had, went to a a big Christmas party with all the right wing psychos who are trying to overthrow the government <laughs> and schmooze it up with them. All these fucking idiots, Matt Schlapp. Um, here's how somebody, here's how somebody summed it up, calling it the party from hell. A sitting Supreme court justice was spotted at a party with multiple white nationalists, a Nazi colluder and a sex trafficking pedophile. And we're talking about yeah. the independent state legislature theory. Again, the Supreme court just heard this case. He's smoozing with all these psychos who believe in this insane bullshit. that's incompatible with our modern, modern American ideal of freedom, which is, you know, we get to vote for our leaders and this video, it's boring and dry, so I chose not to put it in the rundown. But um, during Bush v. Gore, Brett Kavanaugh was on George Bush's legal team, and he gave an interview with Wolf Blitzer where he talked up the independent state legislature theory and said that Florida should just send the electors for Bush and let's be done with it. <laughs> right? Fuck counting the votes. That's bullshit. The, con- the, con- the Constitution doesn't require it, which is sort of true. But again, the Constitution isn't compatible with our modern American idea of freedom, where we get to vote. Voting isn't mentioned in the Constitution, as we talked about before. Um, also, this story came out, I think, yesterday uh, about January 6th being ongoing. 
Um, the now, let me go back before we get to that. This story came out today. There was one person who knew January 6th was going to be bad who worked at the Department of Homeland Security. Right. You and, you and I knew it was bad. It was going to be bad. We talked about it before. Everyone on the internet knew it was bad. There was one 21-year-old intelligence analyst working at the Department of Homeland Security who was got on Reddit to look for good fishing spots around D.C. Mm-hmm. and stumbled into a bunch of people who had blueprints to storm the Capitol and execute members of Congress and law enforcement prevent certification of electoral votes to make Joe Biden the next president. And then this person, this was in December 20th when he discovered the coup plotting on the phishing subreddit. <laughs> right. That's, a, that's what's funny to me is it's like the overlap, I guess, between a phishing subreddit and planning a coup on the internet. Dude. It's like, I wonder if they're getting them mixed up in the comments. You know what I mean? And somebody's like, you know, trout are really biting down at whatever. River. And somebody's like, no, we're not on that right now. That's on, that's on the other thread. No, we're talking about sedition. It's like, oh, sedition. Okay, my bad. Uh, but yeah, anybody know where you can get some flies? You make your own flies. How does that work? And it's like, we're not doing that right now, Bobby. Um, yeah, it's pretty silly. Dude. It's all there's always somebody who it's like you said, most a lot of sane people are like, I think this is gonna be pretty bad. But after the fact, you always find out there was someone, you know, in government or whatever who knew yeah. some shit was gonna go down and nobody listens to him. It's like a plot line from a you know, a bad action thriller or something. Like they never lose oh, he's just a kid or whatever. Yeah. This person, like after, remember, DHS was formed after 9 11 to increase right. intelligence sharing. Right. And there's a person who's screaming, we need to get let people know about this. And the people who are responsible, the whole point of the agency is to increase intelligence sharing. And they refuse to absolutely tell anyone. Here's a chat log from this 21 year old. Uh, it's from January 1st. Also, I found a map of all the exits and entrances to the Capitol building. I feel like people are actually going to try and hurt politicians. January 6th is going to be crazy. Then on January third, she uh, he or she said, "I'm gonna I'm gonna profile and assume it's a dude because they're looking for fishing spots." But I don't fucking know. Uh, I mean, people are talking about storming Congress, bringing guns, willing to die for the cause, hanging politicians with ropes, but still not meeting the threshold. LOL. Right. <laughs> right. He said, "LOL" to DHS check about no one listen to this is going to be fucking nuts. It, this is like I don't know. They, What's he mean, the threshold it. for action or whatever is what he means. Like he's. He's yeah. presenting the this threshold. shit to people, and they're like, that doesn't meet the threshold for a, an actionable find or whatever. Yeah. Right. We should tell we should, we should tell the FBI and the National Guard and the Capitol Police this is going to be really bad. And somebody's like, I don't think it meets the threshold. It's like, there are blueprints to the Capitol. They're right. talking about bringing guns. They got my hanging politicians. <laughs> like, they said they're willing yeah. to die. They're like, mm, that's the internet. It doesn't count. It's like, right. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, and it's, it's, it's like getting, you said, the whole agency, the whole purpose of the agency was ostensibly to. Like not let that because that type of thing is like what happened in the lead up to nine eleven and and like mm. DHS was supposed to the idea was supposed to be we got to avoid that type of thing in the future some real bad shit might happen but mm. the more things change yeah. the more they stay the same. Bin Laden determined to attack inside U.S. The famous memo goes, but Condoleezza, Condoleezza Rice was made national security advisor because she was an expert in Russia, which is going to be a big foe of the early part of the twentieth century. And she looked at that and said, "Well, that's not Russia." And George mm-hmm. Bush is on vacation, so 9-11 happened. Um, the, uh, again, this, per- this person, this intelligence analyst, intelligence analyst, worked at DHS. Another story from a couple days ago. Hundreds of members of extremist group Oath Keepers work for U.S. Department of Depart- uh, Homeland Security, leaked roster shows. More no. than 300 people <laughs> identify themselves as current or former employees of, of DHS uh, <laughs> belong to the Oath Keepers. I mean, not just belong, on their active roles. I'm assuming some people are smart enough to go to the meetings and not fucking put their names down on a list, but 250,000 people work for DHS. So 300 is not like a huge drop in the bucket, but some, but 98% of our government seems to be asleep at the wheel, but these psychos go about their business, going up, blowing up power stations, trying right. to install judges, uh, you know, uh, uh, pushing obscure constitutional theories that allow us to all to not have to vote anymore or get the vote. Kidnapping anymore. governors and shit. Kidnapping governors. And then everybody in charge, 98% of them are just totally fucking asleep at the wheel and 2% of them are in on it. And I'm right. just like, uh, somebody more powerful than me needs to be concerned about this. <laughs> I know. That's what I was saying. When we, at the very top of the show, talking about the substations, I'm saying like reading through it. That's that's what I mean. I was like, dude, this is like, this is freaking me out. Cause like you said, it's like, feels like, feels like this should maybe be a bigger deal than it is. Like it, it just uh-huh. seems like everybody's like, ah, oh, hell they're just talking. They'll be fine or whatever. It's like, no, somebody needs to be watching these motherfuckers cause they're going to try some shit. It's like January 6th was a fucking dry run. You know, they're going to something else is going to fucking happen. 
and everybody, I, we never could have seen this coming. You know, it's like, no, nah, we could have and should have. You just dude, wouldn't. We talked about on Friday's episode the, the CNN got a hold of a 14 page plan that right wingers are passing around the internet on how to disable power stations. CNN has it, and the government is like, meh, that doesn't count. And then power stations go down. They're like, well, these aren't, we don't know if these are connected. And right. Then, and then 300 DHS members are in the Oath Keepers. Oath Keepers do, uh, do January 6th while DHS does nothing. And they're like, no, nah, not connected. Nothing's connected. By the way, if you've lost track, Oath Keepers are the uh, organization that was, until last week when he was convicted of seditious conspiracy, uh, run by the IPAC psycho, uh, Elmer Stewart Rhodes III, who, by the way, he was in the military, which I always assumed how he lost his eye. But nope, the motherfucker shot his own eye out. So it wasn't even in <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that checks out. Okay, well, Matt, <laughs> Matt, find us some uh, questions and comments stuff. Put them up there, and uh, we'll get to that. Um, yeah, while we're waiting for that, did you see Elon go QAnon, Trey? Uh, I saw him get booed off the stage at the yeah, got, Chappelle show. Yeah, every time, so, every time somebody uh, uh, treats him in a way he doesn't uh, – he doesn't feel like he deserves. He goes further and further right. And anyway, right. this morning he tweeted out "Follow the White Rabbit," which is a QAnon thing. Uh, he's he's so, also been calling. It, yeah, it's so transparent. I feel like how exactly how that works, which is like, you know, the people who shit on him. He's like, how he just is so easily pushed further and further into the arms of the only people who are still willing to fillet him all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like idolize mm -hmm. him. He used to be, he used to openly talk about being a Democrat or whatever, more leftish mm -hmm. when he was like the next Tony Stark or the real Tony Stark and all that shit. And now the telling people that are still sucking him off all the time are fucking fringe lunatics. All of a sudden Elon is going down that, uh, that very same path. Nicole Johnson says, Trey, your haircut looks very nice. Well, thank you. It's very sweet of you to say. I appreciate it. It does. Um, uh, yeah. K-Dub says like, and he says link, but like, and subscribe y'all appreciate you. Yeah. Do all that internet stuff for us. We would appreciate it. Yeah. It helps somehow. It wasn't, it wasn't just following the white rabbit thing. He also fired his whole uh, safety and product team, um, product safety team and called them all pedophiles. And one of mm -hmm. his, his head of public safety, he said he said that he's trying to get rid of child porn on Twitter and then eliminate all the people who take it off and said they wanted child porn on Twitter. Anyway, they get, now the guy who stayed at the company when he bought it, trying to fix all this stuff, who he then fired, is now in hiding because he's getting death threats for being a pedophile on the ground. So, Jesus yeah. Christ. Uh, hey, ya 320 says, what the fuck is the white rabbit shit? Uh QAnon is detached from reality. That's not shocking, but they tend to see the world through the lens of entertainment. So, like when they talk about when they say "get the get your popcorn," they mean the show's about to start, meaning the mass executions are about to start. And "release the Kraken" is a reference to a movie. "Follow the White Rabbit" is about taking the red pill. It's from right. um, you know from Alice, the from, uh, Alice in Wonderland and the Matrix. Um, the little pill was it? What are the pills? In? I, forget the pills I can't in remember land, which but, one is which, yeah. but I know the red pill is. The red pill is the one for actual reality, I think. It, yeah. I think because I know that there's like a subreddit, the red pill and stuff, where it's like these dudes who think they've, they're in sales basically, but it's them being like, this is the truth about what's really going on with society. And it's that, you know, yeah. women suck. I don't know. I'm not clear on, <laughs> on all the. Don't work too hard. The, yeah. Don't work too hard trying to figure it out. You're just like, drive yourself crazy. But like, red pill means like, you wake up, you see the world as it is. Right. We're all being held down by feminism and stuff. Black pill right. means you're full nihilist. Now, incels can consider themselves black pill. I think that's when you're just like, LOL, nothing matters. Let's kill stuff. You know, so yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Christy Van Hoff says, still waiting on JFK Jr. to show up. Yeah, those people still in Texas, Mark? Whatever happened to that? I lost the thread on them. Yeah, I think they just sort of fizzled out. I mean, they had to run out of money eventually. They were camped out in Dealey Plaza for like months. There's probably just a couple <laughs> yeah. of like... Uh, you know, homeless people like around that general area or that's what everybody mm -hmm. thinks, but it's actually just the last few of those, you know, they're still yeah. there. They just yeah. now are homeless people. Yeah. Uh, Ragtop DLX ZL1 says, thanks Trey for the set in Omaha, keeping it blue. Yeah. I don't know if you mean in a liberal way or in a cussing way, but I guess I do both. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure if people that. know in comedy terms, working blue means dirty means dirty um, but again yeah I, I, either, either way applies to me so yeah yeah thank you sir you on your bill Hicks? You. <laughs> yeah well now look i th you know 
all the respect in the world for Bill Hicks, but everybody that does comedy knows that like, you know, when you're starting out in comedy, any scene you're in, there's going to be a bunch of Bill Hicks clones at yeah. it. And basically these are just dudes who think that they just get up there and just scream their opinions at the crowd. And if the crowd doesn't mm -hmm. laugh at them, even if there's no jokes involved, that means the crowd's too stupid to understand their genius essentially. And, yeah. uh, so fuck those guys. The actual Bill Hicks though, obviously, you know, yeah, respect. he was great. He's also not what people think of him. Like, like it's like, also, you watch the documentaries about him. He worked extremely clean. His parents were preachers and shit. And he like snuck out of the house. He's 15. He like worked clean and wore a tie and did jokes about his parents. He learned how to be funny before he did the, there is no God stuff. <laughs> right. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Christy Frazier says, glad to see you both feeling better. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Much On better. Upswing over here. I'm about mm -hmm. to go to Tennessee for three weeks with my family. And last year when we did that, both the boys uh, were sick basically the whole time. Uh, so hoping that don't happen again. Trying to tell ourselves because we were all sick a couple weeks ago that, you know, that somehow means we won't get sick again. But that's not how any of that works. But, you know, fingers crossed. We'll see. Yeah, I'm definitely getting. I got to go to Virginia than Florida. I'm definitely getting COVID in Florida. There's no, again, there's no way. Yeah. I, yeah, right. What are you supposed to do? You can't, you can't avoid it. Yeah. Um, I guess on that front, since it's been brought up while y'all are watching, there will be, um, just so everybody knows right now, and we've done this every year, the Tuesday between Christmas and New Year's Eve, there will not be excuse. I intend to mm -hmm. uh, have something uh, next week. Something will be posted at the normal time. It's just sort of up in there right now exactly what it's going to be, but I'll have something for you. And otherwise, we'll try to keep the trains running on time and whatnot as the holidays commence <laughs> jules t says any take on cinema being a trojan horse what's we, the did we did we talk so uh, whatever she's doing is fucking yeah, stupid there's nothing she's doing independent yeah so like meaning a trojan horse like fucking up the election there for that like by running as an independent and i'm i mean i, I think just being uh, she's not doing anything to hurt the Democratic caucus currently other than her normal, like, centrist bullshit about her votes, which is staying the same as it was when she was a Democrat because she's still caucusing with them. She appears to be, like, declaring as an independent seems to be as sort of a threat that she was going to lose a primary, right? But now sure. she's saying, I'm running as an independent. So if you have a primary, if you nominate a candidate, I'm going to split the vote three ways. Right. But no one likes her. There's no, no like, yeah, Kristen Cinema fan base there. So like she's gonna run and she might be able to cause the Democrats to lose by getting by getting the two to five percent of the votes from thoroughly confused people. Yeah, like, I don't understand who like, you know, uh, a staunch Democrat voter in Arizona, I don't know why they would, you know, got follow Kirsten Cinema, you know, and vote independent and if, or whatever. If you're pivoting to be a um lobbyist, because that's how they all make their money when they leave office. Yeah. All you, if all your fucking uh, colleagues hate you. Who the fuck you lobby? <laughs> right. So Aaron, Aaron McCullough says she's avoiding a primary is what she's doing because she knows the Arizona Dems would primary the fuck out of her. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's what we're saying, though. Like, I just still don't think that's... I don't think that's going to work. I mean, it will work in that she won't be primaried because she's not a Democrat anymore, but like... Yeah. It, it's I don't, not going to help her keep her seat. Right. There's, still yeah. no, there's no way she keeps her seat. She's just going to lose with less dignity than she would the other way around. She could also just not run. She can look at the polling data. Um, yeah, dude. I Honestly, I had been assuming that she was taking it for granted that she wasn't going to, you know, have another term after this one. Like, I figured she already, was already looking down the road to whatever, consultants, lobbyists, or whatever, you know, speaking shit, all that other stuff they do after the fact, boards of directors and whatnot. I figured she was already planning all that shit out, and that's why some of her favors, you know, were aimed at, I assume. But, while she's like, if there. she, she could have quietly left after this term, given up her seat, and taken a board seat on some, whatever corporation she, who, whose, you know, water she's been carrying, and got right. been rich, and probably right. no one would have noticed. But if she tries to get that so same positions after running a campaign where she takes two and a half percent of the vote, but leads to Blake Masters being a senator from fucking Arizona, she's going to be untouchable. No one's going to want her under boy. It's like, ugh. yeah, yeah. I don't know, but um, all righty. So yeah, I want to remind y'all again: go to treycrowder.com. Check out my tour dates. Come and see me. It is a good time. Uh, and also you go to weekly skews.com slash more, or you can just go on Patreon and look us up and get them uh, full length bonus episodes and support the show in the process. 
Uh, and again, as I said, going into the holidays, um, we're going to get shit up for you. We're going to keep doing the show and posting stuff uh, with the lone exception of the 27th, the week between Christmas and New Year's. I'll remind you, I'm telling you now, there won't be a skews day that week, unfortunately. But other than that, we'll keep it rolling. Keep having a good time with it. Thank you all for being here. And uh, happy holidays. See you. Love you. Bye.